All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the code behind this example. So I'm gonna go back to the editor here, and at the top we're including our database PHP file so we can connect to the database, and then we have a set of functions. We have notice, get notices, people display, and if we scroll down, we have some additional scripting there at the end. So if we're processing this as PHP would, we're gonna go ahead and start here and jump into those functions as they're called. So first we're gonna see if get action is set. It's not, so we're going to skip this and we're gonna print get notices followed by people display. So let's take a look at get notices real quick. I'm gonna scroll up to the top and it says get notices is actually a shortcut function for the notice function and we're passing it two parameters, an empty string and get. So now we're gonna jump up to notice and the two parameters that it's looking for is the text and the action. Now we use the same mechanism in our text adventure game, so I'm not going to go deep into these two functions. But real quick, we're creating a variable called notices that we can add to in this function, even though it gets called multiple times because we're using a static variable. Next, if it's an add action, we're going to add to the notices array. If it's a get action, then what we're gonna do is check to see if there are any notices, and then we're going to generate a list using an implode function and then we're going to reset the notices and return the output. Right now there are no notices, so we don't have to worry about that. And we're gonna to jump to people display. And I'm going to scroll down so we can see more of this. We begin with an empty output variable, and then we run the query select all from people order by name ascending. So we're grabbing all of the fields from the people database. And just like we did in our original MySQL example, we're going to loop through each item using a while statement and using the MySQL fetch array to assign an array version of each record to the row variable. Now every time this loops through, we're gonna add a table row to the output. In this table row, we're going to include several cells, one cell for the name, the username, the birth year, shoe size, and favorite band. And then in the last cell, what we're going to do is create the delete link. Notice you see delete here, and then around delete is an A tag, and it's pointing to our test.php file. That's the one that we're using here. The action is delete and the username equals, and then whatever the username is for this row. Next, we need to add some HTML around that table if it's not empty. So we're gonna check to see if it's empty. It's not at this point because we have a few records to display. And so what we'll do is take this output and we'll wrap table tags around it, but we'll also add headings for each one of the columns. So one for name, username, birth year, shoe size, and favorite band. At this point, we'll have a full table. But if this output was empty, that would mean that there are no more rows in the database to display. And so we want to display some placeholder text. So what we'll do is set output to there are no people to display in paragraph tags. Finally, the function will return the output. And then if we scroll down to the bottom of this page, you'll see that this is a print statement. So that output will just get printed to the browser.